Yeah, infinity. When you are infinitely far away, at that point, electric field is zero. So that's the special universal reference point we are going to use. As in, you know, so actually we do this in astronomy. The reference point we use is actually the stars. Stars in the sky, they are more or less infinitely far away. So sailors around the world have used the stars to navigate themselves. So what we are going to use is we are going to use infinity as our universal reference point. So that's that sense in which this is V equal to zero. We define at infinitely far away voltage equal to zero. And looking at this line, you can come to this point um, out from infinity. Only the points, uh, paths that are perpendicular to electric field. So, so that's the universal reference point that we are going to use. Now, there will be some situations where you cannot use that universal reference point. Whenever you have an infinite charge distribution, this reference point fails because you're dealing too many infinities. <laughs> but whenever you are using finite charge distribution, either point charge or dipole or um, ring of charges, here, ring of charges or a sphere of charge, you are going to be able to use this universal reference point. And um, so to, whenever we are referring to this universal reference point, we are going to use this phrase that V of R goes to zero as distance goes to infinity. So um, once again, realizing that you cannot use this for every problem, but for the vast majority of problems where you can use it, we are going to use this phrase to refer to that this is the reference point we are using. Um, the first example I want to go over is a voltage formula of a point charge. So this is one of those formulas that's going to be useful to remember. Um, so, um, so imagine I have a point charge here. And if it helps you, draw electric field lines so that you can sort of visualize what the effect of that point charge is. And you even know what the magnitude of that electric field is because you remember this. So the electric field due to that point charge as a function of distance r is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, amount of charge over r squared and I'm talking about the magnitude, so I don't have to worry about the R hat vector. Okay. So the question here, as you guess from the title, is what is the voltage as a function of distance? And if I want to be sure that I'm using this universal reference point, then I just say V of R goes to zero as R goes to infinity. So uh, let me do this one as an example. Um, so all of these calculations, well, not all. This is one way of calculating voltage that's going to essentially apply the definition of voltage. So this is how we define the voltage, right? Yes. So we are going to start out by saying this, that voltage at point R especially the way we define it here, it's going to be a uh, um, change in voltage. So let me call it a small, you add up all the small changes in voltage from R equal to infinity. So you start your integral from way out in infinity and you pick a path to come closer to some particular point R to uh, R prime to R. <laughs> so this is what I mean. So I imagine I picked a point at R equals infinity. And then this is the path I'm picking to come to this point at um, distance R. Good. Now, one thing that you should remember about uh, this integral that we are going to do is this is something called a path independent integral. As in, imagine I have a different point here, like this point here. Then I'm not going to imagine me uh, picking this path because that's going to be way too complicated. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this same path 
so that the, that part of the integral is the same. And when I pick this path along the equipotential, what is going to be my change in voltage? Zero, right? And the claim that I'm going to make without proving it is that um, the two different ways of doing this calculation will give the same result. Do everyone believe that? Yeah, this is actually one of the properties of conservative force and all that stuff. So if you're interested in detail, read in the textbook. <laughs> so I'm going to pick this radial path to help, help me do this calculation here. So now for this small contribution to the voltage change, um, I am going to write out this expression here. Each contribution to voltage change is given by minus electric field times a small interval. Right? So this is equal to minus E as a function of R times dr. Integrated from my starting point. Oh, sorry, I keep I'm switching back and forth. Um, Everyone here familiar with uh, when people use primes, when people are doing integrals? Yes? So I'm using R prime as the variable of integration. And the final R that I'm ending up with is the point where I'm interested in calculating the voltage. It's a common uh, convention, but you know, the primes are important <laughs> that I don't forget them. All right, so, um, so this is my integral setup, as in I uh, imagine having this whole path and you know, without, well, to explicitly say it, what I'm imagining is I take up this whole path, divide into small intervals dr, and for each of these small intervals dr, the minus electric field times that, that gives me the small contribution to the change of the overall voltage. Add it all up, I get the total change in voltage. And because I define, the way I defined, I'm starting at V equal to zero, I'm going to say that whole change is equal to the voltage, instead of bothering with the whole delta V notation. Okay, so let's just plug in the formulas and see what we get. This is the formula for electric field. I know that already. So it's a minus um, R prime from infinity to R, all of this, one over, 4 pi epsilon naught charge over r prime squared dr prime. I didn't mislabel any primes, right? Good. OK. Um, anybody here know how to do this integral? What's the antiderivative of 1 over x squared, I guess? It's, it's good for you to remember that when you're trying to remember the antiderivatives, 1 over x squared is actually x raised to the power of minus 2. So what is the antiderivative? I heard the 1 third, but that's not correct. No, the 1 half is also not correct. Yeah, negative 1 over x. It, once you take the, guess the antiderivative, if you're not sure, take the derivative of the antiderivative. You should get the same thing back. If you don't, you, did, you guessed it wrong. So you have to keep guessing it until you get it right. Right? I mean, that's the only way you do the integral, and that's why integrals are hard. Because all the integral rules that you have learned are essentially guidelines on how to guess the antiderivative. All right, so let me uh, do this. So I'm going to factor out everything that's constant, minus q over 4 pi epsilon naught. I'm trying to be careful with the sign this time, because I'll explain it later. Antiderivative of the, this thing here, minus 1 over r prime evaluated from infinity to r. So r prime goes from infinity to r. All right. Um, two factors of negatives cancel out. That's one of the reasons I'm trying to be careful with all these minus signs, because there's ways to get the correct answer by making even number of sign errors. <laughs> so let me continue. Um, so I'm going to evaluate this at these two limits. I play, plug in the upper limit, 1 over r, minus, I plug in the lower limit, 1 over infinity, that's a 0. So when I evaluate at the limit, the v at r becomes q over 4 pi epsilon naught r. It's a surprisingly simple formula. And in fact, if you've been reading the textbook when we are doing you know, physics 4a, 
you have seen this similar formula in the context of gravity. So gravitational potential energy due to Earth or the sun also goes like this, if you set the reference potential to be at infinity. But this is for electric, um, uh, well, electric potential. So that's it. Um, so any questions?